In this video, I will explain how we built the new website of Eat the Blocks. We did some pretty cool stuff using the Jamstack and Next.js, and I wanted to share this with you. If you are new here, I'm Julian, and on Eat the Blocks, I help Web2 developers get into Web3. Quick announcement, we just launched a bootcamp for Web2 developers who want to get into Web3. This is a six-month program that covers everything you need to become a professional Web3 developer and get your first job in crypto. The material of the course is brand new and it covers some advanced topics that we never taught before. And in this program, we also help you to find a job in crypto with a customized coaching. If you want to apply to the bootcamp, follow the link in the description. All right, so back to the topic of this video, which is the architecture of our new website, eattheblocks.com. And before I explain the new website, let's talk of the old website. Our old website was built with WordPress. This was a marketing website where we have a blog and for the courses themselves, we use a platform called Teachable that allow you to create your own courses. So why do we need two websites? Well, in theory, you can do everything with WordPress. There are a lot of plugins that allow you to enhance your WordPress website and transform it into anything you want, including a course platform. But I have enough experience with WordPress to know that it's a bad idea. All these plugins look very simple at first sight, but when you have to maintain a WordPress website, you realize that you need to work hard to make all these plugins work together. And in the end, your website ends up being slow and full of security vulnerabilities. So that's why we didn't put everything into WordPress. So this is the setup that we had before, but the problem was that it was a little bit messy. We had the course descriptions both on the WordPress website and on our course platform Teachable, and there was some mismatch, which caused customers to be very confused. So to solve this problem, there were several solutions. One solution was to customize the Teachable website. You can customize the HTML using what they call liquid blocks. It's basically like a templating language where you define fragments that are used to render your page, but it wasn't powerful enough. So we decided to keep a separate marketing website where we put all the information about our courses and for Teachable, we would only keep it to host the course and for the checkout, but not for showing to the public what the course is about. So we started with the design. We used a website called 99design where you can set up a design contest. Several designers participated to our project. They did a first version, we gave them our feedback, and at the end we decided to go with only one of them. But we also had to pay the other designers for their participation. So it's a bit more expensive than just hiring a single freelancer, but it helps you to have more choices and in the end we were pretty happy with this method. So once we had the design, it was time to choose our tech stack. On the one hand, I really didn't want to use WordPress again because we wanted something extremely flexible. With WordPress, you're pretty limited by the theme you use. And we also were afraid that we wouldn't be able to build a very fast website with WordPress. So we did some research and really liked the concept of a Jamstack. It's easy to host, fast and simple. So we looked at two technologies, Next.js and Gatsby. The problem of Gatsby is that you cannot do dynamic API calls. For Next.js, you can have a static page generation, server-size rendering, serverless function is much more flexible. So we decided to go with Next.js. So next, we decided how to implement the different features, and we started by the blog. First, we thought of implementing a blog directly in Next.js. We were thinking of writing the blog with markdown files and have the Next.js blog read these files. But then there was the problem of images. Images are hard to handle. You need different size, you need to optimize them, and then you need to handle the SEO. So when you think about it, if you want to implement a blog properly, it's not easy. And on top of it, if we implemented the blog in Next.js, we would have to migrate all the blog posts from WordPress to Next.js. So it just seems very complicated. But then we realized we could just keep using WordPress as a CMS and render the blog post in Next.js. It's quite easy to do. WordPress has the so-called REST API. And since we wanted to be fancy, we added an adapter for GraphQL. So we also set up a webhook so that every time an article was created or changed, the Next.js website is regenerated with all the latest data. Okay, so that's it for the blog part. And next, we still had to take care of the courses. So for our courses, we use a platform called Teachable. And we could have just hard-coded all the data of the courses in our marketing website in Next.js. But that's not ideal because that would force us to manually synchronize the data of Teachable. We make a change on Teachable. We also have to update it on the Next.js website manually. 
Instead, it would be better if this was done automatically. So we tried to use the API of Teachable to source the data of the course, but it was too limited. So we reverse engineer the private API. A private API is an API that is used internally by the front end of an application, but that is not meant for consumption by other application. So it's a bit dangerous to use a private API because you are not supposed to do it. If it's your own data that you are fetching, it's probably okay-ish, but still you have to be careful with this because you can get into trouble. So we managed to reverse engineer the private API by using the dev tool of Google Chrome while we were loading some admin pages. So we inspected the JSON objects of the different API call until we found what we were looking for. And by using the token of the app, we we're able to reproduce these API calls outside of the application using a curl on the command line. Fortunately, they released a new API with more features and in the end, we didn't have to use their private API but it was an interesting learning experience. But now we run into another issue because with our architecture, we would have hit the API for every single page load and we would have reached the rate limit. That's why we had to index the data with a database. The database regularly sources data from our course platform, Teachable, and our marketing website calls the database whenever there is a page load. This way, the requests coming from the public traffic are decoupled from the request to the Teachable API, and we avoid being blocked from the API. So what did I learn building this website? First, each technology is good at one thing, and you shouldn't try to use a single technology for everything. Unfortunately, it's what most people do with WordPress. Another lesson is that the Jamstack is really powerful for marketing websites. You have many blockchain projects that use the Jamstack for their front-end website, and then they use another tech stack for their blockchain application. And before we finish this video, a quick reminder, we just launched a bootcamp for Web2 developers who want to get into Web3. This is a six months program that covers everything you need to know to become a professional Web3 developer and get a full-time job in crypto. The material is brand new and covers some advanced topics that we never taught before. So if you want to apply to the bootcamp, follow the link down below. That's it for today. Bye.